So today on Project Shop, we're gonna be taking a look at my homemade uh, wire stripper. I made this thing out of a metal roller shear brake combination. I got two of them from uh, one of my customers. I paid forty dollars for them years ago, and uh, I modified it. I took the uh, third roller off, took all the metal shearing and braking. This thing had a handle here originally, and uh, I took that off, drilled a hole, tapped it, put this on welded a hinge there and just put a motor on it and sent it um this thing is a poster child for an osha safety video it is extremely dangerous and uh you know we wouldn't have it any other way around here so what i'm going to do today is um i'm going to show you how this thing strips wire but what i'm actually using it for right now is unspooling all these uh communication cable uh spools i got i got a couple of them got a big one there I got a, uh, this is actually number one insulated. I got some more back there and uh, we're gonna clean all this crap up. I got a bunch of copper and stuff. I've been stripping this stuff or uh, unspooling this for a day now. I got a little bit in here, some over there. And then um, up here, I got a couple more spools. We're gonna go ahead and just undo all these because uh i tried to sell them uh they're pretty much outdated some of them i'm going to keep but all this stuff is going to get unspooled and uh, sold as scrap all right i'm gonna show you how this thing strips uh some different size wire that's about as thick as a wire as um it's gonna strip and it'll strip down this little stuff and uh basically what i did is these original three grooves were in here for rolling like um um round stock or whatever and then i cut these grooves this was that one didn't work out too well but it still cuts this one worked pretty good and then this one here and then this one here and this one were the main ones i would use and then for solid core i would just run it through um over here and originally i had a piece of expanded metal across here and then um then i went and just put some of these wrenches and i just have that wood there to keep the uh spools from running all over the place because if it gets too far that way it'll uh it'll lock up because that side has to keep tight because that's where the, the gear is so i'll run a couple pieces of wire through this and then uh, i'll take it apart and show you exactly how i built this thing and and what i did to make this do what it's doing all right so i'm gonna start off with some solid core wire and um, I actually like this machine, believe it or not, better than my high dollar fancy four roller machine because as you can see, this is why this one doesn't have any guards. Um, last time I used it, that piece got jammed up in there and um, I just stopped. But when you put this in here or even over here, a lot of times what happens is this will curl up after that first roller and then get all jammed up in here and all kinds of craziness and first time that ever happened i took the guards off they never went back on and i actually like seeing all this shit operate so um i kept it off but anyway um this is my on and off switch osha approved and we're just gonna stick that in there and it runs it pretty good let's see how tight that is and as you can see basically it just squeezes it so hard It just pulls right off, no problem. Now, this little wire here, now it's actually adjustable by this right here. You probably have to keep it tight. Find this little uh, slot here. And then basically what that's doing is it's just, let me put this down maybe somewhere. Hold on a second. Okay, so this is where I learned to uh, bend and twist. You know, I haven't done this wire in a, in a while, but pretty much once you get it started, it comes right off, no problem. And what it, what it actually does is it cuts two grooves down it. I don't know if you can see that, but it cuts two grooves down it. And uh, I use this wire stripper for years. It's just the only thing I don't like is it, you gotta peel it off 
you know, not like the one I got where it cuts it and then squeezes it so hard it undo does it by itself. Okay, so we're gonna go with a little bit bigger wire. And I think, I'm, I, think I used to run it in that one right there. That was like my main one. As you can see, it's quite shiny. And it moves pretty quick. And as you can see, it puts those two grooves down it and that wire comes right off there. I mean, this thing does an excellent job. Let me see if I can grab that. There you go. See how it's coming right off? I'm actually using my iPhone because um, I was having an issue with my GoPro transferring the videos. That's why I haven't posted a video in a while. Um, but I have a couple other videos that you guys probably like that are on SD cards. I just got to get it transferred and edited. Right now, I'm just using my iPhone. So if this is a crappy video, I apologize. So on this one here, I'm probably going to use this one here where I cut. And uh, probably open this up a little bit. And let's see how it goes through there. And as you can see, put a good groove in there. Let's bend it. Bend it and twist it, and uh, stuff pretty much comes right off. Okay, a little bit thicker piece. This does a pretty good job of staying in that groove. Now that one there. Probably have to tighten down on it. I'll give that a little, little tighter squeeze. As you can see, it's pretty much coming right off. You bend it and twist it, you know. And then uh, this is about as big as you can go. Maybe you probably go a little bigger than that, actually. I haven't run this machine in a while, but we'll uh, open this up and give it a shot. And sometimes some rollers get grease on them. Um, but as you can see, it puts a pretty good cut in it. And then, uh, you know, it's not going to take much to get that out of there. So what I'm going to do now is I'll actually take this apart and show you what I did. Because um, these rollers originally were like machined down. that had like a little nub right there. And then it had a bushing but what happened is from me running it a lot and i let someone else run it and they actually stripped those gears but this company here i actually called them up and they sent me the gears for 30 bucks um let me see if i can get this out real quick okay i pulled that out of there as you can see it just uh slides into that bush in there and then the bush and uh slides in that side and there's a little lock doohickey right here that it's full of grease but anyway so originally this thing had a milled piece it was all one piece like that i got a thrush washer on there right now um and there was a milled little nub sitting in here that piece should come right out of there a pair of pliers this shouldn't be that hard Okay, it's been a while since it's come out of there. Um, anyway, I, what I did is I put this in a lathe 
and I faced it off because the little nubs that were on there, which were about that big, they wore down after a while. And because uh, these, it's just steel bushings, and I just fill them with grease. So I put it in a lathe. I had it bored down, and I had these. These are actually bolts, hardened bolts. I had a whole bunch of them I got for free. So since I had a bunch of them, I figured I'll use those, and I can have plenty of replacements. And then I have a whole piece of this round pipe, which is the exact size for the bushing. And then uh, I pretty much. These can wear out as many times as they want, and then I could just keep replacing it. And then over here, what I did is I had this up in here, and then I would just turn this real slow with a grinder, and I just hand did these, and they're, they're kind of wonky looking, but for years it worked. I put these on here. Um, that was actually, I had these like knobs like that there. So I put that on there with a spring, and um, I actually drilled holes so I can pump grease and lubricate these without uh, taking it off. And uh, that's just metal on metal. And it's been like that for years. Just keep greasing it. And this one over here on this other side actually wore down. You can see the gap. It actually wore down in there. So what I was doing is taking leather, wrapping it with grease and, and putting the leather around it and putting it in there and it hasn't uh, gone down any further and then you can see there I drilled a hole for for grease and uh, up underneath is where I pumped the grease in and uh, this side here always stays clamped down just like mine over there with the gear uh, keep that one cranked down tight because uh, I let someone use it one time and they wiped out these gears by adjusting it on this side and letting it open up and as dangerous as this thing looks, this thing actually has built-in safety feature. When I built it, um, I would actually be standing over here, kind of away from this belt. But this thing hinges up. So if anything happened, all you would pretty much do is lean into this and it would release that. Or if this thing jams, which I'll show you here in a minute, I'll actually jam it up and get it. When I drilled this, this is just um, squeezed on there, you know? So... When it jams, this thing will actually loosen that nut because it's it's a regular thread, it's not reverse thread. It'll actually break it loose and this will just spin. So it's kind of a built-in safety feature. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put some fresh grease on this and uh, put it back together. We're, and we're gonna get set back up to unspool all this stuff and uh, then we're gonna come over here and I got some uh, copper. We're gonna run through this machine right here. Okay, we got it all set back up and we're gonna start running this insulated wire again. Feed one, feed one. Tighten down on that a little bit. Feed another one. Working pretty good. All right, I'm gonna show you how I uh, would strip insulated copper on spools with this machine. show you the safety feature see this it got tight and it just loosened that nut and broke free 
and uh, it's a good way to stop from getting your fingers damaged. So in this case, just keep a wrench handy and uh, tighten it. And then what I would do is just uh, give it a good twist like that. I'm gonna give that a little loosening. And then you're back to operating. Now this thing's all wonky because one time when this was actually mounted over there on the side of that table, I had a spool get locked up like just like this one did. Um, but this thing wasn't strapped down or I forget what happened, but it literally ripped itself off the table and um, this got all dented and uh, it was an epic experience. So anyway. Okay, so a lot of these uh, bigger wooden spools, you can just unscrew them. You get a little prepared steel, and then uh, they'll just kind of fall right off of there. A little, a little work to get it out, but it's quicker than running it through the machine. The only ones I'm really running through the machine are uh, the ones with the plastic. You can sit there and beat them apart, but I'll put them in the machine, let them run, and then come over here and do this, you know. So, I'm getting a little pile going here. I kind of made a little section. This is probably halfway there now, maybe. We'll see how much we can get in on here. Okay, all finished up. Uh, while I was knocking them out over here, I had four unspooling over there with the machine, so it went pretty quick. Probably about four and a half foot at the tallest. Um, I'm hoping there's probably about 1,500 pounds here. Last time I got uh, number two insulated, it was like 80 cents a pound. So we'll see what it comes out to tomorrow. So I decided to keep this big uh, spool here because of the uh, color-coded wire here. Um, I got a lot of trailers, me and my buddy. Probably like six of them between the two of us. And uh, we're always having problems with um the wires they're just crap the ones you buy that are specifically for a trailer so we're gonna see how this stuff works next time we need to get them for now i'm gonna start getting on some of this number one insulated and running it through this machine over here uh, if you come this far thanks for watching